I want to tell you something. Do you see how fantastic this is? Look at this. <laughs> Do you see how dumb this is? <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> he is driving me crazy all Very professional. He's driving me crazy. Oh, here's my school bus. I gotta go. He's driving me crazy all morning. Again, I haven't eaten yet. Again, I'm up at six, I'm up at seven, I'm on the phone. He's drive, driving me crazy. I, I cannot concentrate, that's why I gotta get out of the house. <laughs> and I, I know you all like to work in the house, you like to work in your pajamas, I gotta get out of the house. <laughs> I, I got, the studio is all the way downtown. I have another studio closer here. But I like to hang out with wealth. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look how I have to. So, I go where the wealth is. I've had many offices. But I ain't paying 15, I used to pay 1500 a month, 2000 a month. I might as well buy the whole building. My business now is all on my phone. And when I shoot infomercials and I have client meetings, but it's digital, it's around the world. Would you believe I'm doing business? Look at this gorgeous tree here. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm doing business with a guy out of India, promoter out of India. He calls me at 2 o'clock in the morning. He said, you should come to India. I said, okay, I'm going to flight now. What am I going to do in India? Why do I have to? Why do I have to meet anybody? I don't want to meet anybody. Then I get an email from another guy. Oh, let's meet. Everybody wants to meet me. Meet you. Meet me. Wait, they want to meet me because I'm on television. That's they want to meet me. I don't want to meet anybody. One of my business partners told me they had a meeting with Jeff Katzenberg. They said he scheduled meetings, 15 minute meetings. 15 minute meetings. So you guys, 15 minutes. You met at this uh, hotel for a coffee. Everyone gets 15 minutes. It's like a speed dating. But when you're a big player like that, uh, you figure you go. When you're a big player like that, that's what you got to do. Your time is, is, your time is money, as they say, and it's true. Why, why would I want to meet? So here's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> I was just walking, taking the dog for a walk, and uh, the lawnmower guy, some lawnmower guy, landscaper, and that'll type of my hair in a minute. Thank God I have hair, thank God it's black. Landscaper sees me coming out of the house, working at a house across the street, beautiful house across the street. And as I'm walking, he turns off the, the lawnmower, the blower, whatever he's doing. I said, I used to cut your lawn. I said, you did? What happened? Why'd you stop? <laughs> I don't remember him. We used to have another guy named Ivor he used to cut my grass. He'd show up whenever he wants to show up. He'd show up in May, he'd show up in October, whenever he wants to show up. So I had to get another guy to come up, but this guy, I didn't know who this guy was. I never remember. I didn't ever hire him. I can't remember who all the years I've been living here, and I'm thrilled that I'm in this beautiful neighborhood. I'll, I'll, I'll get that part of it. So he says, I said, when, why did you stop mowing it? And then he tells me he was with another guy that used to cut my grass. Another guy. <laughs> who the strange thing is, I saw the other day, and he said to me, and he hasn't cut my grass in years. And he said, he calls me Hollywood. I said, Hollywood, you keep getting younger and younger. Isn't that very nice? I said, I said, you're very, very kind. And this guy that said to me today, I used to cut your grass. It, it, he used to work with this guy that called me Hollywood. He used to work with him. It was his landscaping company, the guy that called me Hollywood. So it wasn't this, but uh, this guy worked for him and he used to cut my grass, but I didn't. I know the guy that called me Hollywood because I hired him to cut my grass. But this is one of his workers. So that's why I didn't recognize him. But. He has his own company now, his own landscaping company, so I guess he remembered for some strange reason. Look at all these cars here. Now what are we gonna do? Go ahead, everyone go. <laughs> for some strange reason, uh, he remembered me. Uh, get out of the street, you nut. He remembered me cutting my grass. Now why would he remember me? <laughs> he, the guy that was cutting the grass, who now owns his own landscaping company, was working for another guy who calls me Hollywood and he remembered cutting my grass so he's now he's cutting the grass across the street it's funny how things come around and I saw the guy that 
calls me Hollywood a few days ago. He said, Hollywood, you're getting younger. And then this guy said, I used to cut your grass. I used to work with the guy that called, he didn't say the guy called you Hollywood, told me his name. I said, yeah, he used to cut my grass. You used to work for him? He said, yeah. He said, you just, you're living here a, lo a long time. I said, yeah, it's, it's very nice of you to remember me. Everybody remembers me. Everyone wants to say hello to me. Everybody wants to meet me. It's very, very nice. All you have to do is make me money. When I grew up in Philadelphia, what would happen is my family, but everything's different now. Young people would buy a house, buy their first house, can't wait to buy a house. Like my cousin Sandy and Don, they bought a house on Penny Pack Circle, I think it was called. Their first house, you gotta buy a house. And then you look for other uh, developments, whatever it is, where they're building a new development, new house. And then my friends, Louie and Gwen, same thing, they, they, but they bought their first house on, I can't remember where the, the street was at the time. But he's smart, he's very, very smart. And then they had a house built. That's what people do, they have a house built. And I thought we'd do the same thing. So when I moved to Toronto, because my in-laws said they're making movies in every corner, this is the place to be, I had to buy a house. So we bought a house. And then we never moved. I, well, we were gonna move because then all her friends, we bought a house in Toronto because her parents lived in this area. And then all her friends, a new development called Thornhill was being built. And all Andrew's friends wanted us to move up to Thornhill, which I'm glad we did not move because the value is in Toronto, not in Thornhill, which is up north. And south is where the money's at, which is where I live. I live where the money's at. And then all Andrew's rich friends, of course, they <laughs> build houses, they knock down houses, they go into new developments, buy $10,000 square foot houses, 7,000 square foot houses. Which I could have done. I don't even clean the bathroom. <laughs> I have to wash my sheets. I haven't washed my sheets in my bed since 1965. But that's just me. <laughs> I need a girl. Oh boy, do I need a girl. I need a girl to run my life. I need a girl to do this cook and clean. And that's what I need a girl to wash. That's what I need a girl to. I, I need to get back to the 1950s is what I need. That's what I need. So it's only being laziness. So then I said to Andrea, and everyone's knocking down their houses and building bigger houses. I don't know the first thing about that. I, said, I, I hire my friend Carmen Tucci. He knows everybody. He'll knock down the house and build a bigger house. I don't know. I, what do I know? Andrea knows that I, I don't, you know, I'm a creative person. I write scripts, do comedy, show business. But to, to look at architectural, architectural plans and say the bathroom goes here, the bedroom goes there, it's not what I do. I don't vision things like that. Oh, I could vision in movies and television, comedy, I could, but buildings, I, I don't vision like that. We all have our own expertise. So when I go to buy a house, I need to have it furnished. I don't know, I'm gonna buy shades and buy windows and doors. What do I know from that? I just need to move in. Well, when I go to the hotel, I get a, a, a Niagara Falls beautiful suite, beautiful hotel room. My friend, uh, uh, Mike James, uh, introduced me to the manager. So they booked me, to, whenever I stay at the Hilton, they booked me in a beautiful suite at the, right, looking right over the casino, fantastic. I like it, that's the way it is. I move in just the way it is. The couches, the, the curtains, that's the way, it, what do I know? <laughs> that's how I am. I, I, when we moved in this house, I gave Andrew 50 grand. I said, yeah, whatever you need to de decorate the house. What do I know? Andrew decorated the house. She bought the curtains, windows. I don't know anything about it. Alarm systems. What, I, what do I? It's not what I do. So to knock down the house and build, uh, have, a, have an, art, an architect. And, and the, the, the house across the street from where I live, the architect I heard is a very famous architect in Toronto. Very famous. He builds these buildings that look like ships, like cruise ships, that's the, the, the structure, like Frank Lloyd Wright, who built the synagogue on, on Elkins Park like a cruise ship. Go read the Fountainhead. So, for me to knock down the house, like my neighbor did, and he told me he built his house, I think it's, it could be 7,000 
square feet, 5,000 square feet, something like that. It cost him 300,000, he said. But he said it didn't have to cost that much because he put in very high-end stuff. And another house next to him, he said, it's the guy that knocked it down, it's costing him 700,000. But my friend said it, he doesn't really think it's costing 700,000. I said, it's not a lot of money, 300,000 to build a 5,000 square foot house, 7,000 square foot house, whatever it is, not a lot of money. But I'll have to move out for, for six months or longer. Where am I gonna move? <laughs> with my mother-in-law? <laughs> I couldn't even move in with my mother-in-law when we had an ice storm. Lauren was up at Newmarket with Casey. We had all these animals in the house, hamsters, rabbits, whatever we had, the dog. And there was an ice storm and they're, they're not cold-blooded animals, they need heat. I had to pack them all up in a car with Andrea and the in-law and Jared. And we went into a hotel up north trying to find a hotel because no electricity, we didn't have any electricity. And then I found out we had no electricity because Andrea didn't pay the bill. We had no electricity. So we go up to a hotel that don't take animals, but we snuck the animals in anyway. And then they saw us with the animals and said, we gotta get out. So I was calling, I forgot who I was calling. Somebody lived in my area here. Uh, I call his father Hesh, Hirsch, Litvak. <laughs> I was calling um, Litvak, who lived in the area here, around the block from me. And I said, do, do we have electricity? Because he didn't have electricity either. Maybe he didn't pay the bill. He didn't have electricity either. And I said, how many, we're going to have to keep staying in hotels so we get electricity. The animals need heat. The dog, the, the hamster, the rabbit, whatever we had. I started a zoo. The kids wanted all these animals. I buy the kids whatever they want. Now I can't even get Jared to replace the light bulb in the hallway. So as we were going to their hotel, I got the call, they have electricity and there's electricity in the in-law's building. I thought, that's fantastic. So we'll go live with the in-law. And Andrea said, oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, the in-law's not gonna let you come to the apartment with the dog and the animals. That's what Andrea said. No, no, you can't come with the dog and the animals. <laughs> now, normally when people say crazy things to me, I say, all right. I wasn't blogging at that time. So I debated. I said, Andrew, I just spent $500 to get your mother out of her apartment because she had no electricity either. Maybe she didn't pay the bill. She didn't have no electricity either. Nobody had electricity in this area because of this ice storm. I just spent $500 for a hotel room, for food, for you, me, Jared, the animals, in, in one night. And you're telling me now we have no electricity in our house, but you have electricity in the building and I can't come stay in the building with the animals? <laughs> and he said, well, maybe Jared will go with you to the hotel with the animals. Well, it just so happens electricity came on. I didn't have to go to another hotel. The point is, There was, a, there was a rich guy on a show called, that uh, was on Millionaire Matchmaker. So it started a, so selling sunglasses online. Sold this company for 10 million. Likes living in hotels, lives in high-end hotels. I like going to the Hilton, going to the Mirage, going to the, I like it. It's already furnished, they cleaned the room, I like it. I, I like to have the same lifestyle in my house. That's, I, I need a, a chef and a, and a house cleaner. But to knock down the house and for Andrea to say, Dave, the, the bad bedroom's gonna be here, the bathroom's gonna be there. I said, just build the house and let me know when I, here, give me the keys and I'll let me know when I move in. Uh, uh, it's not how I think. So for the, going back to the grass guy, when he said, I used to cut your grass, you lived here for a long time. He's cutting grass of a house that was knocked down and now built by the builder in my neighborhood whose father is a famous architect, see, see? So I'm very happy I did not move from my house. As I, coming back to everyone in Philadelphia would buy a house and buy a bigger house, move into a bigger development. And the only reason I didn't move or knock down the house yet for a bigger house is because I'm lazy. <laughs> That's the only word I can tell you, I'm lazy. Money's not the issue, money's never the issue. 
just make more money. As one of my editor studios I used to go to, he'd say, just make more money. And that's all you have to do is make more money. These kids are making a billion dollars with their tech startups. Anybody could do it. You see me hustle all day to live a billion dollar lifestyle. If I really want it, I go after it. But first I have to walk the dog. As you see what I'm doing right now, walking the dog, see? <laughs> all right, so I'll make a billion dollars after I walk the dog. Now message me, Dave's TV World at Bell.net. You got, you got to make a billion dollars. You got to do it. It's stupid already. You got to live the lifestyle. Now, when I pitch these motivational videos and I post motivational stuff on Facebook, I, I know that people that are broke have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Because I used to pitch, and I used to think everybody thinks like me, and I've done these blogs before. Where Andrew and I, when we first went to Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls, went to, I like Niagara Falls, I just like it. Well, went to uh, Las Vegas. We went to see all the hotels, went to see Circus Circus. She said, who would stay here? Now she's thinking that way because we wouldn't stay there. So who else would stay there? Andrea thinks everybody thinks like us. Nobody thinks like us. Not that nobody thinks like us. As Andrea says, there's everybody else and there's David Bronstein. Nobody thinks like me. So when I post motivational stuff and I read success stories and I go to see if I'm on Forbes magazine every day, it motivates me because it makes sense. Oh my God, I look at the money, look at the lifestyle. We got to live that way. And then I share that on social media with all my other friends, followers, whatever you want to call it. And they just sit there. <laughs> it's the craziest thing I ever saw, but it's a 2080 rule. Maybe a hundred people look and I'll type up my hair in a second. A hundred people look at it. I gotta have hair and it's still black. A hundred people look at it and maybe 20 will do something. Maybe one or two will do something. I know for some reason the broke people, no matter what, they stay broke. No matter, and this is my experience, no matter what, the, the broke people that I know and and I'm sorry that I know them, the broke people that I know, because nobody has to be broke. I, you're just all lazy like me to, not to move. But I'm glad I didn't move because I, I live in a beautiful area, beautiful street that you can see. The biggest architects are moving on my street. The, the guy that I know that knocked down his house and built it for uh, 300000 his son said to me, don't you ever move. Everybody wants to live on your street. That's what he said. Everybody wants to live on your street. You're near schools like you see here. See schools? There's a Jewish school here. You're near shopping centers. You're near the bus, the subway. I could walk to the subway in 15 minutes. Nobody does that, but I, I walk to the subway. Because I, I can never get the car. I'm just going to have to hire a limousine driver. So I made the right call. Not moving. Not moving on up like the Jeffersons. Because where I'm at just increases with value. What the hell do I do here? Where I'm at, Jesus Christ. Where I'm at, well, oh, there you go. Where I'm at just increases with value. And it's a beautiful area. It has everything. When I, when I was a kid, I grew up near a, a shopping center. So I needed milk. I walked over to get milk. That's what I do now. I walk over to get milk. You see me in the shopping center. I walk over to get a bagel. I like that. There's an area called, uh, oh, I'm trying to fix this here. How do I do it? Jesus, Chris. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> Well, what are you going to do? There's an area called uh, Bridal Path Post Road. The houses are 20 million. It's so dark in that area. It's like the Carrington Mansions. Now, of course, who would buy a $20 million house in Toronto when it's only warm and nice weather? <laughs> maybe four months. May, June, July, August, maybe four months. In August, it's getting cold already. Well, I guess you have money, you have a $20 million house here, a $20 million house in Palm Beach, whatever it is. But Toronto's a beautiful city. Beautiful restaurants, beautiful malls, you see me in the malls. I'm very, very happy here and I'm very, very lucky to, have to come here and it's been very good to me. And the landscapers recognize me. <laughs> now go to Dave TV World at Bell.net. You gotta live a lifestyle. Go. Maybe you shouldn't go there because then you'll, you'll make money and you'll move into my neighborhood. Dave's TV, forget about it. Dave's TV, forget about it. Dave's TV World at Bell.net. You got to make our billions. You got to live a lifestyle. You got to have fun. I do business with overachievers. You got to be an overachiever. You got to want lifestyle. You got to want to have fun and make a lot of money. You got to be an overachiever. You just can't drop out. I mean, you can do whatever you want. What the hell do I know what you do? Now, regarding my hair. I was using this shampoo called Tresme, Tresme, whatever it is. A year or so ago, two years ago, well, years ago, it was another, another uh, shampoo called, um, an Australian shampoo. I can't, you probably know what I'm talking about, but I can't remember. It was an Australian shampoo. 
and I stopped using it. I like Tresme, 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 whatever. It's a black bottle. And Australian shampoo is green bottle, whatever. So my hair comes out fine. My lawyer says to me, would you comb your hair? He says to me, how can you walk out of the house like that? You're on television. Dress like a mensch. Which is Italian for dress like a gentleman. So he says to me, so I went to buy, so I was shopping with Andrew at Walmart. I said, I gotta buy shampoo. She says, oh, here's the uh, Australian shampoo. I can't remember the name of it. Used to buy. I said, I'm looking for Tresme, Tremme. It's a black bottle. It's pink. It's purple. I like the purple. That's why I buy it because it's purple. Which is true. Purple is my favorite color. And he says, oh, but you used to buy this Australian shampoo. How come you don't buy the Australian shampoo? She didn't, she didn't use the word Australian. I just can't remember the name of it. So when I got married, went to, to the Bahamas for our honeymoon. I was reading a book. People have three no's in them, three no's. After you say, can I have this no? Let, let me have it, no. Oh, come on, let me have it. Okay. People have three no's. That was two. So when Andrea said, why don't you get this Australian shampoo? I said, because I'm looking for Tresme. But you used to use it, Australian shampoo. What's the matter with the Australian shampoo? You like the Australian shampoo? It's cheaper than the other shampoo. I said, okay, give me the Australian shampoo. So I bought the Australian shampoo, and this is why my hair looks like it does today. For days, I still had some of the Tresme shampoo left. I was using it. Then I started using the Australian shampoo. And now look at my hair. Maybe that's why I stopped using the Australian shampoo. It has no body. I ain't got nobody and nobody. I ain't got nobody and nobody cares for me. Except me. <laughs> nobody. Look, my favorite word is me. Nobody cares as much about me than me. And schmucky here. Here. <laughs> the nut. <laughs> oh, he has a great life. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> go to DaveCVWorldAbell.net. I got to go buy Tresme. You can have the Australian shampoo. I got to give it to Andrea. Look, I look like Dr. Zorba. Look at my hair. You, you go look up that. I'm not telling you the punchlines. DavesTVWorldAbell.net. Get my products online. We produce television infomercials. We produce pitch videos. We produce reality shows. We're in the cash business. If the deal makes cash, we're in. We're shooting for the next billion dollar TV deal. Message me. Let's make our billions. Let's go have a lot of fun. And maybe landscapers will recognize you too. Message me, DavesTVWorldAbell.net. I gotta go get a baby. Goodbye. This work, Jesus Christ. <laughs>